So today I'm going to show you one of the most important animations that you can master. And the reason why this is the most important animation is because it's very slow, it's very simple, and it's liked by a lot of people. It's going to be a short tutorial, but you'll learn a lot. And if you master this specific style, then everybody will like your product animations. It's as simple as that. It's very slow, it's very smooth, and it's very simple. So we already have our headphones right here. We placed some lighting in the previous tutorial. Uh, we can now place a camera. So I'm going to place it somewhere underneath here. Looking upwards, control shift zero. The camera itself has 80 millimeters, which is fine. I'm going to bring this somewhat over here and make sure that this part is on the thirds so that we see the logo on the thirds. And it looks like this. So let's go into the camera, select depth of field. And now everything is becoming blurry because we haven't selected an object that we want to be in focus. I'm going to select this one right here because we want more emphasis on the logo. So now let's play around with the f-stop until we get what we like. I think this is a bit too much and it can look very cool, but we're we're already getting some bokeh over here. I'm going to use the f-stop of five and I'm going to set blades to six. Not that we're going to see any blades, but I like to do that because it keeps my workflow consistent. Now here we have the logo and I'm going to place the 3D cursor right there and I will place an extra light. And this light, shine at it, uh, it's a bit hard. I'm just going to use Lumio. There is the light in our logo, but as you can see, the entire object is being lit way too much. And even if we bring down the light power of this yeah this looks pretty cool right but we're still getting a lot of trouble with these other textures so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this light and i'm going to teach you a new trick we're just going to park that light right here for now and i'm simply going to select the main controller which is this cube on the first frame let's start from over here press i let's make it a slow animation so let's do 90 or 100 frames that's approximately four and a half seconds and i'm simply going to move it like this press i but i'm going to use a linear animation and we barely ever use that but i'm going to use it right now so let's set this to linear and it's simply turning around so this is the simplest animation you can do it's literally an animation that's going from a to b without any speed changes it's so simple but it does look smooth and the animation part now is done did I tell you? It's quite simple. Now, where we're going to make it premium is with the lighting. So right here, we have this light that we aimed at our logo. So I will go into this light and I select it and I make sure that we can actually see the light in the logo right now. Uh, then I'm going into the shader editor right here, click on use notes and I will add a light path note, light path note. One of the properties that we can access is the glossy depth. And I'll show you exactly what it does. If I place this in the strength, you saw some things disappear. All right, and why did that disappear? Well, I'm going to show you in a second, but first I will add a color ramp. And if I switch these around, watch what happens. Ah. There's no light in the logo. So why does this happen? Well, I'm going to explain. In this material, in our normal material, we naturally have our JBL logo. And since this has roughness or glossiness, I don't know why we're conflicting the terms with each other, but since we have roughness or glossiness, this is making sure that the light is visible in this due to the glossy depth. But if we increase this, there will be no reflection in this gloss or in this rough material. There's still some light coming onto this object because it has some roughness. But if we increase this all the way to two, or we actually make the value very white, then all the roughness will disappear and it becomes black. The light no longer works on this material. And I'll show you that if I move this around and it's only coming into the logo. Now, of course, we don't want this material to be so black that no light is shining on it at all. So I'm going to click on this and uh, remove this hue saturation and value node. We do want to have some extra lighting. There's nothing wrong with that. It would be very unnatural if only the logo was being lit, but we can place it a bit farther and make sure that the logo is the one that's strongly animated while the other one is kind of it's kind of there, but not, not that much. So this is the way you do it. We can now play around with this light and make an animation out of this. So let's go to the timeline and let's make sure that we are on the first frame. First frame, the light should not be in this frame. So I'm going to place the light GXX, place it a little bit to the side and let's see what happens. Here we want the light to enter. Maybe we don't even have to make an animation. It's going to do it by itself. No, it doesn't. Okay. So on the first one, I'm going to press I, then the light is coming in, but it should move out immediately also. So to frame 100, and I will place it over there and press I. 
What have we now? I'm going to make this linear as well. All right, so we have a linear animation of the logo being lit. I think it's a bit too strong, so I'm going to turn this power down just a little bit. What we can also do is perhaps bring this one over here when it's first coming in and bring this one closer out. But what I actually want to have is a bit more of a gradient. So I'm going to turn this down. I think this looks pretty cool. So I'm also going to rotate it on the Z axis just a little bit and press I on this keyframe, on this last keyframe. So now we have a pretty professional looking animation with a logo streak going on here. And perhaps what we can do to finalize this is bring in an aerial light and shine it from the back, not on the model, but on the plane. Something like this, maybe a bit less strong. And that's how you create a very simple animation. We simply added some lighting to the logo and we made a very small rotation animation for this headphone, which is linear and it's not that big of a deal. But if you want to come across as a professional, simply make some slow animations and have some lights move over the object. And then you'll pretty much be settled for a lot of use cases. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, click on subscribe. I also recommend checking out the Fiverr video, which I made recently. And some Fiverr artists actually made some animations for this headphone, and maybe you can be inspired. In the next video, we are going to make another animation and it's going to be awesome. So click here to watch that next or watch the Fiverr video.